Jesus is the reason for the season. You may be seated. Worship team, I wouldn't go far. I'm not sure where we're going to end up today. Say, Jesus, Jesus is the reason for the season. God is, he's God's greatest gift to man. And his name will be called Emmanuel. Say, God is with us. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government, the kingdom of God will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Come on, Spanish speakers. Say, paz de Dios. How many want the peace of God? If you speak, if you have, if, how many know anybody who speaks Spanish? Anybody? Okay, if, you, if, they, if they speak Spanish, that's their dominant language, get them here every Sunday at 2 o'clock because there's freedom in Spanish. Freedom Espanol. That's, we had 300 last week. That's a four-week-old campus. That is officially the fastest-growing campus at our church right now. You know, who's, you know who's competing with them? Sons and daughters coming strong. Come on, 12 o'clock, where are you at? Where are you at? You got to grow. You got to grow. Don't get lazy on the Lord. Us four are no more. Come on, I'm here. Well, it's not enough for you to be here. You got to get others here. That God's house can be full. Come on now. Say, number two, Jesus is with us as a king. Say, a king. Now, this is my quote here. Bring his kingdom to our generation. How many believe that our generation needs the king and his kingdom? And, and it means God's authority. It means God's rule. It means God's dominion and dominance. How many know God wants to rule in authority, his kingdom on earth like it is in heaven? And there, there is two kingdoms in this world right now. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of darkness. It's interesting. Facebook just came out with a, a whole new matrix type of thing. Like, what's it called? Huh? Meta world. That's, I thought, man, that's like a nerd world. It's for people who can't so talk to people. So I need a, I need a, I need a fake body and a fake world. That's, a, that's the pain, and it's going to go big. And we'll be on it. I'll be there, hey, y'all. Because you got you to gotta, you gotta get in their space. Some of your kids are like, what's Pastor Jay doing here? I'm watching you. <laughs> TikTok crazy fool. I'm going to be all up in there. Yo, yo, what's up? You're going to hell. No, I'm just kidding. But it seems like nerds created it for nerds. But you have to learn how to communicate. This generation is losing their ability to communicate. You know what the future, the future successful people are going to be? The people who can talk. Because people are not going to be able to talk anymore. They're not even talking now. They're like this, eight hours, ten hours. They can't even talk. They can't even communicate. How many know we gotta, we got to teach our children how to talk? How to be social? I hit a nerve, meta geek. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Nerd alert. You don't like me, huh? I'm just joking. You got to talk to people. I don't like people. I like being on my avatar. No, you got to talk to people. You got to communicate. You got to preach the gospel. You got to help people. You got to spend time with your family. Anyway, sit down. We've been doing that for you. Meta World's been around for years. It's called NFL. NBA. I thought yesterday, man, the NBA played all day. Still the family time, huh? Oh, now I'm hitting nerves, huh? See that? Oh, wow. Well. I better stop. Rewind. Okay, I'm in the spirit now. Say, Jesus is with us as a king. We have to bring his kingdom to our generation, God's authority, God's rule, God's dominion. 
Say it with me. God's authority. God's, authority. God's, rule. God's rule. God's dominion. God's Have you ever heard somebody say this before? God's in charge of everything. You ever heard that? And it's true at a level, but it's also not true. Because if God is in, in charge of everything, why are children dying? Why is there murder and mayhem everywhere? Why is there chaos amongst the nations? God ain't doing that. The Bible says that Satan did that. Oh, I'm going to mess your theology up. Can I go deeper on you or no? Okay, here it is. Ready? When God created Adam and Eve, what did he do? He gave them what? He said a word. He goes, he gave them dominion. He gave them authority. He gave them rule. He said, I'm the king of the heaven, and I need you to be my king on the earth. So I'm going to rule from heaven, and every day I'm going to come to the garden, and we're going to walk, and we're going to talk, and I'm going to tell you what I want done. And you and Eve are going to get done what I want. So I'm going to rule from heaven and you're going to rule on the earth. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. And the devil saw that command and he says, okay. So now I realize God created a kingdom called the earth. And he made the earth look like heaven. That's why when people die and go to heaven, they say, wow, it looks a lot like earth, only better. Of course, because when God made earth, he made it as a, as a replica of heaven. I can't get deep on you. Come on, somebody. I'm going to show you something here. He said, I want you to establish my kingdom on the earth. Satan heard it, and he realized right at that moment, oh, because he saw everything being built. He knew a kingdom was being built. And he says, well, who's, who, who is God going to send to be in charge of the kingdom? Because that's what Satan wanted the whole time. He wanted to be in charge of the kingdom. And God says, no, 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 you're not in charge. I'm going to put Adam and Eve in charge. And the moment he put Adam and Eve in charge, what did he say? He said, forever, flesh and blood will have authority on this planet. And the devil knew it. So what did he do? He tricked, he deceived Eve, caused Adam to rebel. And once they did, they were no longer bringing God's kingdom. Now they were flooded with Satan's thoughts. Now, now all of a sudden, instead of peace, Adam uh, son, had a son named, named Cain, and Cain killed his brother Abel. Now we have murder, we have shame, Adam and Eve felt naked for the first, where did all these crazy thoughts come from? They never came from God's kingdom, they came from evil spirits. And now evil spirit thought process got into Adam and Eve and they began to produce children with evil thoughts and they began to do the will of, the will of Satan. That's why God had to wipe it out through a flood called Noah's flood. That process has never changed. That's how Satan rules and reigns and has authority right now on the earth. Because he found people who will listen to him and with their body, they'll do his will and they'll build his kingdom. That's why Satan has his best generals in high places in power of government, in parliament, all over the globe, so they can carry out his diabolical plan, like killing millions of babies. You, all, you ain't ready for me. Well, God's in charge. Wait a minute, you're in charge. Oh, oh, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And if we just sit back passively saying, well, God's going to do whatever he wants to do, when he wants to do it, because he's in charge, then we give up our, our assignment, we give up our obligation, and we say, well, whatever's going to happen, happen. And the devil says, perfect, now I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to take over, and I'm going to rule from government to education, and I'm going to corrupt the whole nation. But God is raising up a church that is taking back what the devil stole. And the government 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 will be on his shoulders and his name will be called Emmanuel God is with us Jesus didn't just come to touch you. He came to take over. 
all. Didn't he say that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God? Tell your neighbor you have a kingdom assignment on you. It's the wrong neighbor. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you have a kingdom assignment. You're not here by accident. You're not here by coincidence. God wants to use you to take over something. God wants to use you to raise your children to learn how to take over something. God's authority. God's rule. God's dominion. Matthew 12, 28 said it this way. You with me? All right, you sure you want to? Let's go there. Say, by the Spirit of God. Say that four times. By the Spirit of God. I drive out demonios. How to say demon in Philippines? Say it loud. Demonio. Because the Philippine and the Hispanic both got conquered by Spain. So we speak the same. Come on, somebody. <laughs> demonio, demonio, same. Come on, come on. <laughs> you didn't know that? All right, whatever. Okay. I think I said that right. If I didn't, whatever. Okay. So Jesus is saying, I drive out demons by the fact that I'm God's son. Now what he said. That's not what he said. He said, I am able, when I walk up on a situation and there's a demon, I, I drive that demon out because the spirit of God is on me to do it. Well, wait a minute. I thought you are God. He's like, I am God, but I emptied myself of God. So I am God, but I'm also all man. And I'm driving out a demon by the spirit of God. Why did he do it like that? Because I'm trying to show you what you're going to do when the spirit of God comes on you. Come on, somebody. All right, sit down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's keep reading. Say, okay, ready? Say, by the Spirit of God, Jesus said he drives out demons. So when demons leave, what shows up? Then, and only then, the king, dumb. King, rule, dumb, dominion. Then the kingdom's authority, then the king's rule, then the king's dominion of God, the kingdom of God, has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and steal or take his possession unless he first ties up the strong man? If you tie up the strong man, you can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather scatters. So Jesus is saying, come on, mijo. I'm going to use you. You're going to have to be a demonio. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then you two girls, come on. You're here. You're, you're, you're a pretty strong guy. All right. You stand behind him. So say that you're the strong man. Jesus says, okay, there, there's a strong man, and he's guarding what? His house, his casa. Because in his house are souls. In his house is all of our stuff. And so that's like Pharaoh. So Jesus says, when I'm going to come up to you, I'm going to cast you out, Mominos, and I'm going to take what's in your house. Come back. But in order to do that, you have to be stronger. Well, what happens is so many times the devil has our families, has our finance, has our health, has everything God promised, and we want it back. And we're saying, God, give it to me. God, give it to me. And God said, no, 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 wait a minute. I gave you authority. And we're, 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 oh, God, please, Dios mío, please. And God's like, why, please? I've already given it to you. What you need to do is take authority and say, strong man, get out. Get out of my way. And you need to take back. Come on, I'm going to teach you something. 
How many times? This is the religion. This is, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of religion right now, because religion puts it all on God, but the kingdom puts it all back on you. Because God said, if you do your part, I'll always do my part. It's like your ATM machine. Come on. If there's money in the bank, all you got to put it is four, three, two, six, whatever, and bam. And God's like, you put in my word, you put in my authority, you do my, your part, and I'll always, come on, shout like you got authority. Now let's keep teaching. Sit down, please. Say authority. authority. All right. Now I'm going to say this and then we're going to move on. There's certain people I can talk to, like, it's crazy. Like, I talk to certain guys from Africa. And, the, 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 you know, they face a different thing over there. There's, there's, there's the pastors, some, when you meet them, you go, oh, Lord, this guy's packing punch. It's not what they preach. It's not how well they sing. It's not how well they're dressed. It's not how they look. It's what they carry with their words because they carry great authority. And I think if we're going to inherit what God promised us in 2022, we are going to have to carry greater authority. Because the devil recognizes authority. Do you remember in the Bible where the Bible says there was seven sons of Sceva? And these sons of Sceva watched Paul cast demons out. And they said, you know what? We're going to do the same thing. And they rolled up to that demon-possessed man, and they said, in the name of Jesus. That's right. Here's the problem. Whom Paul preaches. Problem. And the demon says, wait a minute. The demon and the guy said, wait a minute. Paul, I know. Because he'd be whooping me all over the place. Peter. I know Peter. But who is you? And that man with the demon jumped on those boys, beat them half to death, stripped all their clothes off, and those boys are running down the street naked, embarrassed, because they didn't understand their authority. How many of God's children, in a sense, are running around embarrassed by the enemy? He's embarrassing them in all these areas of life because they've never been taught. This is what you carry. And the spirit of God that was on Jesus to cast out demons is the same spirit of God on you to cast out those demons. But the key, the key component is faith. Do you believe it or do you doubt it? Because the, the faith in your authority as a believer is the key component to driving the demons out of every arena of your life. To say, you can't stay in this family. You cursed me. You cursed my mom. You cursed my grandma. You cursed my great grandma. But the curse stops with me because I have kingdom authority and I'm taking you out of here. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Clap like you're breaking that poverty spirit. Come on. Clap like you're, you're getting that spirit of infirmity that's been in your family and you say, you can't live here no more. Infirmity, get out. Cancer, get out. Early death, get out. Early pregnancy, get out. You spirit of abuse and divorce, you get out. You spirit of perversion, you get out. You spirit of fear, you get out. You lying devil, come on, shout like I'm talking about authority. Let, let me break some. Some of you had families that the, the depression Depression on mom, depression on, and this cycle of depression and, and this opiates has been in your family and then it jumped on you. If you don't deal with that thing, it's going to jump on your children. Somebody in that family has to step in and say, I'm bringing the kingdom. And you got to, you have to talk to that spirit of depression that carries a mentality. Come on, come on. It carries thought process. And you say you can't live here you gotta go and then and then you gotta put the word into that family where you create a new mentality of deliverance and kingdom shout like i'm talking the truth sit down can i keep going deeper or no i never got past point number one in the first service and i don't think i'm gonna get past it today maybe this is a new series somebody say series Joshua 24, 15. How many want to break the generational curses off your life? Pastor, Pastor, what is a generational curse? It's something in a family where the devil has been in that family 
and the devil's authority, the devil's rule. God's not ruling there in that family. It could be finances, where no matter how hard you work, there's never enough money. You got a spirit of poverty in that family. Number one, you got to start tithing. You got to start giving, but you got to start taking authority over that thing. You don't just sit there and take it. You got to open your mouth and you got to prophesy to it. Well, I can't see it. I can't feel it. That don't mean it's not real. Oh, Lord. I feel that devil getting nervous. I see him. Should have never let me preach today. Come on, somebody. I prophesy into my tomorrow. Now, listen to me. No, no, no. We're going to get there. We're going to get somewhere. Listen, we've got to get somewhere. A devil in the family? Like molestation. You see it in family. That's perversion. It stays there. And it skips. Toot, toot, toot. Sometimes it'll skip one, but it'll, it'll, it'll stay in that family. And somebody has to rise up and say, you cochino spirit. You, you don't, you, see, you don't even want to hear me. Look, I, I don't like him. No, that's a spirit. Don't turn the TV off. I'm talking. The God Almighty wants, he sent me as a prophet to tell that Pharaoh he has to let you go. Also, you're a wild, 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 teenager, wild. All of a sudden your kid turns to age and they want to start doing wild things again. Whoa. No, 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 you filthy lying devil. You ain't going to touch my daughter. You ain't touching my son. No, no. Now the fight's on. Come on. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you can't be passive with that devil. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to cast that devil out. Just because you can't feel him, just because you can't see him, you know he's there because the fruit of it. You'll know them by their fruit. That spirit is there and you got to say, get out of my house and never come back. You. Just remember where you came to church. It's on the building. It says what? Freedom. That's what we specialize in here. I remember one time this pastor tells me, well, we don't believe in casting out demons. I said, really? He goes, no, we don't do that. That's like, you know, old school. I said, really? I said, so where do they all go? Well, it turns out he was living a double life. And when he told me that, I said, so what was in me? When I got saved, they cast all that stuff out of me. What was that, not real? What did Jesus do? Everywhere he went, the demons, they, Jesus show up, and they, before he even did anything, they'd come running. What are you doing here? Because they recognized, oh, no, we got to go. See, when you step into an atmosphere, you want to carry so much authority, where well, they start popping off. Oh, Lord, I'm going to, let's, let's go get it. Come on, sit down. I'm, I'm going to be bringing a minister in here in, in, in January, March. The man carries great authority. I already know once he, once he lands and his foot hits the ground, the devil's going, L.A. devil go, uh-oh. When I travel the world and I show up, I can feel it. That devil looking at me like, uh-oh, that's right. I'm coming after you. Come on. Elbow somebody say, you got authority. Stop acting like a whip. Stop acting like a sissy. A sissy lala. You got authority, brother. Come on. Some of y'all macho in the world, 10 guys, you'll go up and fight and all that. But when this realm, you're like a little, like a little, like, ooh. No, here, we're going to make you a warrior. You're going to fight for your family. You're going to fight for your children. You're going to fight for your life. Shout like we raise warriors here. Powerful. Lord, help me. Now, you know, and when you come, you don't come in your name. You're not coming by yourself. God has a kingdom. And you know what kingdoms have? They have soldiers. And the devil has soldiers. You know he does. The devil can't be everywhere. The devil can't be everywhere. So he has soldiers. They're called principalities. Ephesians 6, 12. Principalities. These are classes of demons. P principality, powers. 
Rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in high places. Four levels, ranks. Devil has an army. He got, it. he got his stuff organized. He's got ranks. He's got file. He's got soldiers. He's got men who will listen and obey. He's got men in the highest place of a, go a government all over the world trying to plan and scheme right now on how to put, enslave you and me. How to enslave our mind, enslave our money, enslave our children. Right now they're planning. But you know what God? God also has a plan. He says, I look and I laugh because I'm also raising up soldiers. Let's go, let's go, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go there. Can I go there? It's real. So he has, he, has, he has soldiers, they're called demons. And he sends them on assignment to our families, to our lives. He sends them on assignment to take us out. That's why you see all these great men and women of God. They fall, they, all this tragedy, right? Because those spirits are on assignment. That's why it's so important that the church prays. Because when we pray, we push back the darkness. Come on, there's power in prayer, church. I said there's power. Don't, don't ever underestimate the power of your prayer. Now listen. These, this, the, the devil has these, these, these demons, right? But God has his army too. And they're called angels. Remember Gabriel? He showed up to give Mary a message. Message. Have you, you, you ever heard of a Michael the archangel? Well, that's the one you don't want to mess with. That, yeah. If Michael shows up, you better hope and pray he's on your side. He showed up, wound, wound. What's up? I've seen angels. I've also seen demons. They're horrible looking. I don't believe it. That's your problem. You don't believe anything. That's why you're on the mess you're in. Until you start believing, you're never gonna have the kingdom. So it's the kingdom of faith. It's in the Bible. Read it. Whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you loose, that means whatever you allow is allowed. Whatever you don't allow is not allowed. That's in the Bible. One time my sister, where's Tamar? Is she here? It's in children. Aubrey's, that's her, that's her daughter. Where's Hannah? Hannah was dancing. Hannah, Hannah, she was having Hannah. And she had a C-section. And the, 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 when they operated on her, you know, it, it didn't go good. So they sewed Tamar back up and she was healing, but there was internal bleeding they, they, and she was dying. She, they went back in and they tried to fix it. They thought they fixed it, but they didn't. And now she's really going, she's dying, she's dying. She's on life support basically. They're keeping her going. So they're gonna go in a third time, and on the third time, I'm driving home from, from East Los Angeles. I worked at, at, the, at, at, at the, as a counselor over there. I'm driving back in, into Whittier to go to the hospital, Whittier Hospital, and on my way, I have an open vision. I'm driving on Whittier Boulevard by the old valleys, and I'm driving, and next thing you know, by the old DMV right there, and I'm gone. I'm no longer on Whittier Boulevard. I'm in the spirit realm, I'm in the hospital. I'm looking down at my sister on a hospital bed. And I'm looking down, and what do I see around her? Four massive demons. These things were big. And I knew, I knew by the Spirit of God, I knew by the gifts of the Spirit, the discerning of Spirit, I knew right there, oh, those are guardian demons. And they're, they're protectors, they're big. They weren't smart. I could tell they weren't very smart, but they were muscly. And on top of her was the smart one. He was about that big. He had like Edward Scissorham hands. He had scissors and scissors in his claws. And I, I believe in doctors. I love doctors. God uses doctors. So if you're in a medical field, this is not against you, but this is what I saw. There was a little demon on her and it had a medical mask and little glasses and a little medical cap like a surgeon. Looked like an alien. And he was cutting her and I knew by the discerning of spirits, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was cutting her in her stomach. And the next thing I know, I saw something that changed my life forever. Out of, out of the sky came the biggest, baddest angel you've ever seen in your life. And this thing was a warrior. And we, the way I knew it was a warrior is because it was all black, like it had been shot at. And it was all blackened, but it wasn't blackened like, 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 like beat up, it was like battle, like a battle angel. And it reached down like, a, like, a, like an eagle, grabs a trout, and it reached it right out of the ceiling, and it had like a claws, and it grabbed that demon on my sister's stomach, it broke it in half. You, all you heard was a squeal. It, it was gone. I'm prophesying something's gonna change. And those four tonto demons, they looked so stupid. 
and they knew they were in trouble because Satan's a tormentor and they knew we blew it and they were like this stupid and they just lost I get to the hospital my mom's right there she runs out mijo mijo you don't care you won't believe what happened I said you won't believe what happened she's like she go but tomorrow I said she's gonna be fine huh yeah how did you know I said mom sit down on Whittier Boulevard I had an encounter with an angel authority whoa authority I said authority so she, I said what mom go ahead and tell me what I already know in the natural tell me what the natural is well the doctors went in and they found a little tiny incision that the first doctor made as accident and that's that's all it is sewed up to it she's gonna live she would have died and we would have said, oh, it was a mistake, malpractice. But in the spirit realm, it was a demon behind it all. How many problems are you dealing with right now? And in the natural, it's this, it's this, it's this. But really, it's a spirit. And unless you take authority over it, you can't release those angels. Come on. I'm trying to teach you how to cast that devil out of your drug addicted son. Your son can't stay drug addicted. You drug addiction can't come in my family. I break the curse of drug addiction. I break it. I break it. I break it. I break it off your family. Shout like God has given you authority. So we sing, I prophesy into tomorrow. We're not just singing songs. We're declaring it's going to be better than it's ever been. But pastor, my marriage is on the rocks. It's going to be better. But pastor, my family's broken. It's going to be better. But pastor, the doctor said, it's going to be better. Why? Because God gave you a promise. And God gave you a word. And God said, I got a future. And I got a plan. And I got a hope. But you got to come in agreement with God and say, let your will be done on earth like it is. And somebody give God some glory right now. Come on. Let's stand up if you're able. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, are you, ready, are, you, are you ready to prophesy, to declare what God says about your future? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God says, if you have any mountains in your life, any strong man in your life, that you can speak to the mountain and say mountain get out of my way and that mountain will have to obey you how many are ready to speak to a mountain how many are ready to prophesy you're not hopeless you're not weak you're not without an answer you've got a mighty god and when you speak life the angels of god are released into your destiny Somebody shout one more time. Give them glory. Hey. I, had a, I had somebody come to me and they made a decision. It was, it was, a, it was a, hardest, one, a really hard decision for them. They decided, you know, I'm going to make a stand for God. This Christmas, I'm going to make a stand. Because my family has decided they don't want to serve God. And I'm going to serve God. Not everyone's going to like it, but I'm going to make my stand here because I want to bring the kingdom of God into my family. And my other, my family that I grew up with, they're still messed up. I'm believing for them. I'm going to keep praying for them. They don't want to serve God. They want to do their own thing. As long as they keep doing their own thing, they're going to have the kingdom of darkness in their life. And the curses are going to stay in that part of your family as long as they decide to do their own thing. But somebody in that family has to break out. And this young lady decided, you know what? I'm going to break out. But you know what? When, when she did, I got this scripture. God said, it's Joshua 24, 4, 15. It says, if you're not willing to serve him, then you decide today whom you're going to serve. You're going to serve those gods and their mentality, your ancestors or your, or your, your, your mom, your dad, and your great-grandma, and your great-grandpa, and your great-great-great-grandpa. Are you going to serve those gods, the ones they worship? Are you going to worship the gods of the world and whose land you're living? But this person decided, no, no, no. As for me and my family, 
we will serve the Lord. You know what that was? That was a decision that we're, we are not going to live in those curses anymore. We are not going to live under the dominion, under the rule of darkness anymore. We serve the living God and we're going to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and God is going to add. Come on, somebody act like I'm talking to you today. Let's worship the Lord. Come on, it's going to be. Not everybody likes your decision, but you either live in darkness or you're going to live in the light. Let your light shine. Come on and give them glory. Come on, give them praise. Come on, praise them. Come on, praise them. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're, you've been dealing with, but it's time to step up. You need to put on, I said you need to put on the armor of God and you need to take back what the devil has stolen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're in the kingdom of God now. And in the kingdom of God, we suffer violence. But the violence, take it by force. Stop asking permission. Take it by force. You keep asking God, but God said it's already yours. You need to take it by faith. You need to take it back. Take it all back. It belongs to you. 2022 belongs to you. 2022 belongs to you. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.